Good morning. Today I will be talking about why I joined the few, the proud, the Marines. <laughs> Okay, so we're gonna start by backing all the way up to when I was less than one year old. My dad always tells this really funny story about how the army, they called our house and I guess they had some kind of mistake in the system because, well, they tried to recruit me into the army. Speaking, yes, this is Sergeant Butthole from the United States Army and we want your son to join. Oh, uh, uh let me ask him. You wanna join the army? I think he's too young. He says he wants to learn how to walk and read first. I guess that's understandable. Oh, wait, what about you? You should join the army. What? Uh, no, I'm too old. So life went on after that. I started playing the drums in fourth grade at 10 years old, and I kept that up all the way through high school. That's what I really enjoyed doing. And while I was in high school, I decided that music is what I wanted to continue to do as a career. So I took several auditions. I got into every single school I auditioned for. I decided to go for music education, which that did not work out at all. It'll probably be a topic for a different video. And I was gonna march DCI and WGI while I was going to school. I had my whole life planned out for the next four years. After that, I didn't want to think about what was gonna happen because that's too scary. But anyways, my senior year of high school, it was towards the end of the year, the Marine Corps recruiters, they came into the cafeteria and talked to all of us while we were eating lunch. Then they came over to my table and they started talking to me and I told them that, hey, I wanna go to school for music and march drum corps. And when I said that, the recruiter's eyes kinda got real wide and he got real excited. And nowadays, I totally understand and realize that, you know, these recruiters, they have to meet a certain amount of people in each MOS and MEOPers, which stands for Marines Musicians, enlistment option program, they're pretty hard to come by. So the recruiter got excited when I told him that I was a musician looking to start a career in music and he informed me about the Marines, Drum and Bugle Corps and how many options we had for doing music in the Marine Corps. And at that time I had zero interest in joining the military. Like, not whatsoever, not even on the radar. I just wanted to go to school, do my thing, and have a great time. And then after that, didn't want to think about after that. That's what I did. I started going to school. I marched DCI in the summer. I marched WGI in the winter. I also had a whole bunch of jobs all throughout the year, part time. I taught three or four kids a week private lessons. I also taught a high school marching band, a high school indoor percussion. I wrote for a few different marching bands and indoor percussion. I started doing Gallant Entertainment, which did the Giants drum line. I also worked as a lifeguard. Little known fact, I'm a really good swimmer. And I worked at this Ace Hardware for like a month until I got fired. Termination reveal at 50,000 subscribers. So I was super, super busy all the time. No breaks, constant grind. But I don't mind that, I like working hard. So in my freshman year of college, I went to PASIC, the Percussive Arts Society International Convention. That was a really, really great time. There were so many good clinics. I learned a lot of good stuff there. And one of the most memorable performances from PASIC in 2008 was the Old Guard Fife and Drum Corps. guys come marching in and my initial reaction was like whoa these uniforms like what is this because they basically look like a bunch of George Washington's walking around but after I got over that I realized like how freaking cool this was so they play on rope tension drums and it's super super clean And at the time, I had zero exposure to that style of drumming. You know, it's a, it was a whole lot different than what we do at DCI. Very different style. Now, fast forward one year later, my professor comes and tells me that there is an opening in the old guard for snare drum. So I go online, I look at the little flyer, and I see that the starting pay is $55,000 a year. And I was like, holy freaking crap, that is so much money. With all these jobs that I was doing all year round, I was probably making 55 dimes a year. 
So the thought that I could just go do this one awesome thing and ship that decimal point over... No, the, the other way. Yeah, there it is. That was mind-blowing to me at the time, and I really wanted to get in. So I practiced the crap out of all the material for like two months before the due date, and the part that was the most pain in the butt was not learning any of the material. I had to burn it to a DVD and mail it in. And I never made a DVD <laughs> until that point, and that took me forever to figure it out. Keep in mind, this was 2008, and YouTube was a thing, but... I mean, the military is a little behind the times. So I spent several days making sure the DVD was completely perfect, figured it out right before the deadline, mailed that in, waited like a month, and I did not get called into the live audition. Got cut. And I really, really wish that it would have just been like upload the video to YouTube and like set it to unlisted or whatever so they could see it because well one that would have been a whole lot easier than burning a freaking DVD. But also if that was the case then I would still have that video to like go back to and play some clips of it and maybe even see like what I did wrong or what I could have done better. So fast forwarding along through my college career, the old guard had, it was like every single year there was another vacancy open and it was switching like from snare to bass drum every year. It was weirdly consistent how that happened for that four year time frame. So I auditioned for them every single year and I got cut every single year, never got into the second round. So after five years of going to school, finally, freaking finally, I graduated. Probably discuss why it took me five years instead of four years in a different video as well. But anyway, so now I'm out of school. So I decide to go back to school again and get my graduate degree. So now I'm going to University of Delaware. I also got a teacher's assistantship, which means I had a full scholarship and also got a stipend for working with the marching band. So basically I got paid to go to school. And I also kept all those other gigs I had going for me. So I was really, really busy the whole time I was in grad school. But once again, I didn't mind that. So in the summer of 2013, I was teaching the Bushwhackers, a DCA corps, and at DCA finals, the Commandant's Own, the United States Marine Drum and Bugle Corps, they came and played an exhibition at the end of the show. And you know, I didn't really know much about this fine group of people at that time because, I mean, they didn't really post when their auditions were, it was just kind of, you go online and apply. There wasn't really much coverage on them, like, I don't- I just didn't hear about them until finally they performed at a place that I was at, and I thought they did a pretty decent job. The thing I remember the most from this performance was their front ensemble, it was super tiny, they just had two xylophone players, and there was one section in the show where both the xylophone players picked up ratchets and started playing the ratchet part, but they were spinning like the ratchet handle in unison at exactly the same time. And I remember I turned to my buddy and I told him like, man, that is the most badass ratchet playing I've ever seen in my life. And I never thought I would say that. Then in 2015, the United States Marine Corps drum line, they performed at WGI finals, which I was not there live, but I remember just watching the videos on YouTube and I came across that one and I was like, oh, that's interesting. They, they do that now, that's pretty cool. Okay, so then I graduated from University of Delaware, got that master's degree, hell yeah, and now I don't know what to do with my life, like, at all. I was 26 years old, all I did with my life so far was, I was a baby for a little bit, then I went to school and had some random jobs towards the end of that. And that was it. Like, now, what do I do? I don't know. So I got an opportunity with the lifeguarding company I was working for, and they offered me a job as a supervisor. So I was pretty excited about that, I was getting ready to do that, and then I saw the old guard once again had a snare drum opening. So I was like, all right, this is, I'm gonna freaking get real serious. Like, now I'm out of school, like, I can, 
totally do this. I have a master's degree that looks super good. Let me figure out how to get in. And that's when I remembered that the person that won the last snare audition was somebody I knew. It was this guy, Jeff, who taught me at Carolina Crown in 2010. So I reached out to Jeff and I asked him, I was like, hey man, can I like come down for like a private lesson? Like I need to really like get solid on this stuff as much as possible. So I drove down from New Jersey to Virginia and spent the whole day with Jeff, probably like a five or six hour lesson. It was some really good stuff. And I learned a whole lot just about the approach and the technique and I kind of got some like really good feedback and ideas of why I didn't probably get called into the live audition before. So I worked my butt off for this audition. I took all of the feedback that Jeff gave me in the lesson. I also watched like so many old guard videos on YouTube and I transcribed them. I started playing along. I had like them on the TV with me playing and a video camera behind me like trying to match like I studied the crap out of the technique. So the deadline came, I made my little DVD once again, sent it in, waited a month, and I got in this time. Holy crap, I got into the live audition, finally. So I was so excited and like really, really motivated to do as well as possible on this audition. And also if I didn't get in, then I would have this other job lined up, ready to go. So things were working out. Every single day for like four to eight hours, I would practice this old guard stuff all day long, whenever I was free, I would practice this because I wanted this spot. So finally the day comes, I get there, we start the audition process and I got cut. Now I've done a lot of auditions in my life. Like I did like region band and all state band in high school. I auditioned for college. I auditioned for, for grad schools. I auditioned for wind ensemble and orchestra in college. Out of all the auditions I've ever done, this one, the old guard audition, that was the most disappointing. And I'm not saying that because I didn't get in or I thought I deserved it more than anyone. Like that's not it. I'm just saying that the audition process and how it all went down, yeah, it was kind of a big letdown. Once again, I'll probably make a whole video about how that went down. But life goes on, right? And I also had this supervisor job to look forward to, so did that job, and holy crap, that sucked. I hated this job so much. Being a supervisor for a lifeguarding company, like this is, oh man, it was so much freaking work. And like I said, I like working a lot, but this was too much, like even for me. I would have to schedule over 50 lifeguards at 13 different apartment pool complexes, and I'd have to drive around in my personal vehicle to all of these complexes every single day. My poor car, my poor car, I put like probably 50 to 60 thousand miles on it in just the three months I worked there and it was like round-the-clock stuff like you never got a break you woke up at like 8 worked all day till like 5 and then you had to work on the schedule and people were calling you trying to get off for the next day and then you wouldn't go to bed until like 11 after you figured out everything then you wake up and do it all again and I hated it so then 2017 rolls around and I see there's another opening for the old guard this time on bass drum so I'm like all right screw it I'll try to do it again even though the audition wasn't that great of an experience the last time I'm gonna try it again who knows maybe I'll get in this time so once again I hit up Jeff for some lessons he had me come down now Jeff is a snare drummer. He actually had another guy, Mike. It was Jeff and Mike together in this lesson. It was pretty awesome. It was a lot of really good information. Like I had a snare drummer and a bass drummer just giving me all these tips and advice on just the fife style and how to play bass drum with good technique in that genre. And now finally, freaking finally, they stopped doing the DVD thing. They had us upload a video to YouTube. Hey, 2017. YouTube's been around for 10 years, but Better late than never. And hey, now I can post a clip of how I played. This was one of the solos I did on the bass drum. If you want to see this whole video, I will leave the link in the description below. So as you can see in here, I totally killed it on that audition piece. Like all those rhythms were really, really good. I was really proud of that. So I sent in the file, waited a month, and didn't make it into the live audition, got cut.
So now I was like starting to get like pretty frustrated with how my life was going. I could not get into the freaking old guard. I was not enjoying my job as a supervisor. I actually t chose to demote myself back to lifeguard because it was like barely even a pay cut. I don't I think I might have made more lifeguarding like since I worked overtime. So I'm spending some time trying to figure out what I'm gonna freaking do with my life. Then once again WGI 2017 comes and I see the video of the Commandant's own doing another show there. Now they did one in 2016 also, and I saw that, and that was significantly better than the 2015 show, but the 2017 show, this was impressive. I remember watching this show, like, after watching a few of the other WGI World Class, and I was thinking, like, man, this is, like, just as good, if not maybe better, than some of these other World Class groups. Like, these guys are freaking legit. So after watching that performance, that's what really, like, got me, like, in the mindset of maybe I, like, want to check these guys out and see what they're all about. Now, the pay isn't quite as glamorous as what the old guard offered. The old guard, you're automatically promoted to E6, a staff sergeant, where the Commandant's Zone, you start all the way down at E2 and work your way up. So at that time in 2017, you had to go on their website and send an email in saying you wanted audition materials. It's a little different now. They actually do post their vacancies on social media. At that time, I sent in the email, just asked like, hey, like, you know, I might be interested in auditioning for the tenderline. You know, what do I have to do? So they sent me the audition materials and they just had me play all of it and post it on YouTube, not through DVD, thank God. So I did that and sent it in, waited like a month, and then found out that they wanted me to come in for a live audition. So this was kind of working out exactly the same way that the old guard audition worked. It was just a little more relaxed feeling, like it wasn't announced, it was just kind of like I wanted to do it and they wanted me to do it, so I went and did it. I did an audition. This was in January 2018 when I went to audition. Went through it all, it went great. Had to wait a really, really long time before I found out that I actually got in. I think it was like June. Like, I guess that's six months of waiting, but it was worth the wait. I got in, I got a job, and I'm really happy that I made the decision to try out for the Commandant's Own because, I mean, obviously I really like it. I enjoy it here a whole lot. And if you guys didn't know already, I love playing the quads. Like, they're my favorite instrument. All the percussion instruments I've ever played, the quads are the best. And honestly, I feel like the only reason that I didn't really audition for the Commandant's Own like I did for the Old Guard for several years was just because I didn't know about it. Like, I didn't know when auditions were, if there was open spots, how it worked. Now there's a lot more information available, and we got a wonderful team of people working in public affairs trying to keep everybody updated on audition situations. So I shipped off to boot camp in October of 2018, got through all the training perfectly fine. I have some very interesting videos on boot camp if you would like to check them out. And while boot camp, yes, it gets you into shape physically and you get broken down by the drill instructors and then lifted back up and all that good stuff. The most eye-opening part of that whole experience for me was just learning about you know, all the history of the Marine Corps and hearing about all these crazy devil dogs that fought for our country. Like, I have never been so motivated to be part of anything, like, as much as when I was in boot camp getting ready to become a leatherneck myself. So, quick message to my fellow Bella Woodsmen out there. While my initial goal was just to simply get a job doing music, I am so glad that I ended up here in the Marine Corps with all you fine leathernecks. Cause just the amount of pride that goes into being a Marine and the esprit de corps as we call it, like that just adds so much more to the job. Not only do I do what I love, I play music professionally, but I am also a freaking Marine. Semper Fi, Ura. And like I said, I've been working up through the ranks from PFC and now I'm at Corporal. Should be picking up Sergeant sometime in 2020. It's going well. And with this wonderful extra earnings I get off of my YouTube channel, that $55,000, well, financial reveal at 55,000 subscribers. So that's my story. That's why I joined the Marine Corps. If you enjoyed this, make sure you click the like button.
And don't forget to enter my EMC costume contest. For full details on how to enter that, check out the Things Drumline Kids Say video. And don't forget to click that subscribe button and ring that liberty bell. Because when I reach 69,069 subscribers and 6969 of those subscribers ring the liberty bell, I will post a very special video where I compose a cadence entirely of sixlets, ninelets, and sixty-ninthlets. And also consider buying a custom t-shirt such as this one. I'll leave that link in the description. And have a good morning. First try.